Hello everyone, welcome back to chapter 8. This is the fifth part that we're going to talk about different types of reactions. And in this part we're going to talk a little more about precipitation reactions. We're going to look at something called the ionic equations versus the molecular equations and then the net ionic equations. And this is what shows us what's really going on whether or not this is going to be a precipitation reaction or not. So when, when I show the complete neutral formula equation, we call that the molecular equation. Okay, and so that's how we normally think of these being written as KOH plus MgNO3, etc. We put the states in there, whether it's aqueous or solid, okay, and that tells us the precipitation. But what's really going on? Why is it that only certain things are really involved in this precipitation reaction? And so one way to do that is to show the complete ionic equations and then the net ionic equations. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the KOH and I am breaking it apart and showing how many ions I actually have um, in that when I put it in water. Okay, so when it's in aqueous, it's dissolved in water. And so I have the K plus ion, the OH minus ions. And since I have two KOHs, I have two potassiums and two hydroxides. And so I do that for each thing. Notice though that I don't break the magnesium hydroxide apart because it's not in an ionic form, it's in a solid form. And so when I do this, I can look and see which of these ions are present in the reactant side and in the product side, and then I can figure out what the overall net ionic equation is in the formation of that solid magnesium hydroxide. So there are just some rules to do this complete ionic equation. Um, we write the electrolytes as ions, um, soluble salts, strong acids, and bases. If they are weak, then we don't bust them apart because the whole thing is not dissociated. So they will remain in the molecular form on the left-hand side, the reactants, but they will be ionized somewhat. So I show that on the product side. I'm going to get to an example of that in a minute, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so the basics is when we have a strong acid base or a, or a, a strong electrolyte that is going to completely dissociate. And so I'm going to write this, um, I'm going to write them as the ionic forms. And then if I have a solid produced that I checked my solubility chart and I know that that's not going to be soluble. Um, and then everything else is, is in ionic forms. What that allows me to do then is identify something called spectator ions. And the spectator ions are those, just like if you're at a football game or a basketball game, they're not involved in the game, but they're there. And so the, they don't really participate. They were just present in order to bring the other elements into the reaction, but they don't really participate. And so the way I can tell if it's a spectator ion is if it's present in the reactant side and in the product side. And so anything that's in both on both sides, they will really cancel each other out because they didn't change. They're still there in the same exact way. And so then I can take whatever's left over like your lead and your chloride ion. And so those two are the only things that are really reacting to form my solid. And so this is, so I write the ionic version by busting them into their ionic forms. And then I cancel out any of the um, spectators. Once I've done that, then I rewrite this in the net ionic. So the net is just telling me what actually is going on. Which of those ions are actually involved in the process? So the example I'm giving you here is you've got potassium sulfate 
and silver nitrate, which are both aqueous, that tells you that they are dissolved in water, and they perform KNO3, which is aqueous, and silver sulfate, which is not soluble, therefore it forms a solid. So then I take, I've got two potassium ions, so that translates to two K pluses. I have one SO4, I've got two silvers and two nitrates, so silver and nitrate, and then I form two K pluses, two NO3 minuses, and then the silver sulfate, which is not soluble. Then I look and see what's the same on both sides. Nitrates are the same, potassiums are the same, and so what I'm left with then is the silver plus the sulfate forming silver sulfate. So even though I've got potassium and I've got nitrate in here, they're not involved. They stay exactly the same when the reaction is over as they were when you first put them into the aqueous solution. And then I've just got you another example to look, look at here. Okay, so same exact procedure, you're just taking them apart and, and you remember how to figure out those charges. You've got a list of the polyatomics um, and then the, you know, sodium is in 1A, so it's a plus one. Um, so you should remember how to do that. So it's the reverse of putting them together. Okay, so let's try an example here um, and, and see if we can go through the process and get, get you ready for your practice problems. All right, so in this one, we've got three strontium chlorides plus two lithium phosphates give a strontium phosphate solid and six lithium chlorides aqueous. Now, you are Chem 2 students, so you should be able to take an unbalanced equation. Um, it, I should, you should look at, you, you would be able to look at those two things. You would be able to predict the products, and then you would be able to balance it, okay? So once you have, so this is the molecular, right? So the molecular, we're going to translate that into the complete ionic, okay? Okay, so this, so I'm going to have three SR2 plus, my pen is like really slow, sorry plus six Cl minuses because I had three of Cl2s. So when they form ions, that's going to be six chlorides plus six lithiums plus two phosphates. And again, you've got a list of your polyatomics. All right. And then I'm going to put the products underneath just to make it a little bit easier for me, okay? And so I'm going to then have um, SR3PO4 because that's a solid. Now all of these were aqueous and I'm bad about forgetting to do that, so I'm going to do it now. Okay, um, so I formed SRPO4 2 plus 6 Li plus plus six Cl minus, okay? So that's my complete ionic. So to get my net ionic, I'm going to look and see what my spectator ions are. So I've got lithium on both sides, and I've got chloride on both sides. And so now I'm just going to write my reaction with what's left. So I've got three Sr2 plus, plus 2 PO4 3 minus gives me the SR3 PO4 2 solid. So that's the difference between molecular, complete ionic, and net ionic. 
and I've got several for you to try so you can see if you've got the hang of this. All right, and that's it for complete ionic and net ionic equations.